am I here? I see someone saying, oh, there he is. Does that mean I'm here? Somebody? I think I'm here now. Maybe. Just maybe. Maybe I'm here. Lay hype. Okay. All right. Someone type in one, two, three, four, if you can hear me. Oh, man. Okay, I don't know what the heck happened. Here's the thing, folks. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't care telling YouTube to its face. YouTube Live is horrible. It's awful. It doesn't work. Slivers can make us eat crow for this one because he always tells us this. We know it's true, but I'm like, no, nah, we figured it out. Except for then you click go live and then you just look stupid because you're live except for... You're not live on YouTube. You're live everywhere else. Uh, I'm glad you can hear me and see me. Now there's a chat. My people, thank you. Oh my gosh, I got worried. I'm sweaty. I was, I was, <sighs> be whoop over there trolling. If I'm getting trolled by by my good friends, I know that we're okay. Whoo! Okay, thank you, folks. I like clicked everything and then it just, uh, it just uh, is wacky. And uh, Jesse, uh, we do use OBS, but OBS and YouTube don't like to get along very well um so it's always a bit of an adventure uh when we're going over because it's like we have to go live on obs and then click go live uh on youtube and sometimes they don't want to talk to each other and it's just bonkers bill so we're here uh i'm very happy to be here uh this is awesome so cool uh, i'm happy 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 uh you can see behind me there the internet uh is there uh, and I'm going to be going through Kickstarter. So what you're looking at is, is kind of like a big page with a bunch of Kickstarter projects. And I've got a bunch of them, uh, opened up based off of y'all's interest. So, uh, it's going to be super thin. We're going to see what's going on. This we haven't done this in about a month because it's been a very busy time. Uh, and John Willis is what I'm still crying about. Not winning the Teo expansion always. Uh, you, as you should listen, it, we're going to try to get you a, uh, a copy someday. Somehow you'll, you'll own it already. And then 10 years later, I'll be like, here's your copy, man. And you're like, that game's stupid anyway. I don't even like it anymore. So I apologize. I tried to rig it, man. I really did. I tried to rig it in your favor and I just don't have the power. I, I can barely get online here. So, you know, you can see the level I'm operating at there. Uh, pardon my sip. Um, Jonathan Foster over here. Hello, sir. Once again, catching the live stream on night shift at the dam. How goes the dam today? I hope it is uh, exactly where it is and there's nothing going on at all. Cause that means, you know, that's good. If something, something's going on, it's usually not good. Uh, so we're happy to have you here. Uh, uh, and uh, Makush or Makush, Makush Brody, uh, greetings to you. Happy to have you here. Alexander up in here. What to do fam. We got Drake up in here. Fam. Um, as Larry says, if there were only there was a better streaming platform than YouTube, yeah, man, I feel you there, dude. It's uh, it's nuts. What's up, Jesse? Up in here? Uh, I didn't realize it was that Jesse. Now I see the picture and uh, and saying that this is a hardcore game. Yeah, man, we use OBS and it's just I don't know. It's just always half the time it's my fault because I forget in OBS to I put in the right stream key, but then forget to switch it to say YouTube and then it freaks out. And then, then this time I did all that. Cause I was like, I'm going to be smart and know what to do. And then it just didn't work anyway. So it was just bizarre. Fred's here too. What to do? I'm going to say hi in the chat. So, you know, that's me. But then also if anyone else chats in, this is brothers Murphy. It'll be Nick. I don't know if he's going to be joining us. He's just not committed to the Murphs, you know what I mean? I mean, he is. He's done like the last two of these, so it's my turn. Um, and like I said, I'm going to take you through Kickstarter. So we got a decent amount of stuff uh, built up here from the last month. It was kind of the slow time, but if a month goes by, there's going to be so many new campaigns on Kickstarter. It's just how it works. So uh, again, I'm going to be stopping through. We have a list of games that um, are of varying degrees of interest. Usually most of them will show interest from the Bing Bong community at large. Uh, there's definitely a few in here that I'm already interested in and want to know more about for sure. So I've got a, uh, uh, a kind of a list here and we'll get through uh, a good, a good bit of them anyway. So um and uh, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. So Fred's that guy that thumbs up your vids. Listen, can you tell everyone you know why aren't they thumbing up the vids too? You're doing your job. 
Why isn't everyone else? I mean, lots of people are. Uh, Makush said, Yido. Yeah, I've got that one loaded up. There's like a deluxe version of Yido coming up. Uh, there's like a Dice and in Ink, a Roll and Write anthology, which I am here on without knowing anything else. I'm just like, yes, get into my life. Whatever Roll and Write combo pack thing this is, I want to know more. I just literally just played Lantern's Dice and I was just like, it's just great. It's just a great version of this game. It's wonderful. I don't know. I love it. Make me roll it and write it, flip it and fill it. I'm down. I'm down for this. Bring it on. So, I think without further ado, I think we ought to get into this thing. Boom. Ooh, look at that. It went blue, and now it's back to white. That's cool. Uh, I just want to make sure y'all can see the internet there behind me. And again, this is just a big old uh, list of tabletop games on Kickstarter. They're active right now. We'll be coming back to this in a bit. But at the top here, I've got a bunch loaded up for you. A bunch that are on the list. We'll go through what these things cost, what they seem to entail. My very quick thoughts on, like, based off of this two seconds, this game looks cool or no. I don't want this game. So uh, there you have it. That's what we're going to do. And we got Bill Kennedy up in here. What to it do? It's just me. But, hey, happy to have you. Uh, you get all the attention. You don't gotta. You don't got to give your attention to two Murphs. You can just, just drop it all on me. And how good is that? Uh, and Thomas, I mean, here, hello to all you bing bongs. Hello to you. Uh, so let's get into this first one. So this first one is Spellbook Minis and just made some money right there as we were looking. So Spellbook Minis is a pocket sized gaming boxes for your Dungeons and Dragons miniatures and dice. So they look like little fancy boxes that hold your. Ooh, wow. That's pretty cool. So these are going to be like, ooh, that's nice. Oh, that's really nice. You can roll your little dice in there too. Ah, sorry, I got stopped by that. That was that was exciting. So this has a goal of five grand. It's made about ninety grand. These types of things tend to do well. <laughs> you start to as you go through Kickstarter more and more. It's just you know right away. You're like, that's gonna fund. That's gonna fund for sure. This one, yeah, I don't know. Things like this, they're gonna fund. People with D and D, they got that money. Uh. All right, so let's see. So nothing is more immersive than pulling a literal arcane tome, book of shadows, or grimoire straight from your game and onto your gaming table. In this Kickstarter, you'll create your own customized, pocket-sized, highly prized spell. Ooh, that's nice. That's like a little bit of like grease light in the start. Systematic, high dramatic, customized, pocket-sized, highly prized spell book to encase your dice and miniatures. You'll personalize the art material components and design to manifest your imagination. Living materials uh, together with millions of combinations means your spellbook mini will be your own showpiece like any other. That's pretty cool. So it looks like you can kind of be like, I want it to be like this. I want it to look like that. It's going to have this over here. It's going to be right there. It costs $49.99. I would imagine it always is 49 bucks or more. And you get a uh, copy of the classic spellbook mini B. Among the first ever to receive a miniaturized spellbook tailor-made to your specifications. So what what are the fancy ones we can get? Okay. So you get removable foam, so it keeps your uh, dice quiet and held in place. All right, so you're not going ka -ka 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 -ka. It's got magnetic closures, rad, rad, rad. It's got a thumb groove for easy opening. Got to groove that thumb. Very nice. Very. Oh yeah, let's watch this action. Oh yeah. Gifts. Oh, that's tight. Here's the thing, I don't need this, but I really want it. You can put little coins in there. Look at the coins in there. Look at that. Yes, that's satisfying. That's pretty cool. So they got that. You can get some monster minis and things to add in there. Oh, and you can start. Oh, okay. So if you get the cherry red oak, no extra, but you can go mahogany. You get a fine walnut for 10 more bucks. Let's try to think of what's the most expensive one. We can get a, a Wengi, Wenge wood. Get that dragon scale leather. Oh, you know, that's made out of real dragons. 10 bucks. An elder die set, 15 bucks. I'd, I'd go all in. Look at that. Very nice. Very nice. The shinies right there. Beautiful. I like that. Uh, and they can get more and they go up in level. What do we think about this? This is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Bill says, I totally understand it funding, but not for me. I don't D&D &D anymore. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. Uh, um, Akush said, 33 watchers need to give thumbs up. I appreciate you for uh, continuing that work. That's true. That's true. Uh, <laughs> Fred Farrow says, uh, Paro, excuse me, says, survey says, pass. Yeah, like this, but see, this one, this campaign is for a very specific audience, for D&D &D folk and stuff. And again, 
I'm not at all surprised to see this is made like 90 grand off a $5,000 uh, fun goal. I hope these people can keep up with that demand because it looks like they've got, let's go back to the top here. Oh, I don't know. 1200 books to make. Seems like I'll be pretty hard to do, but it's pretty cool. If you're into that thing, if you're not in that thing, I don't need to spend 50 bucks on a fake book, but it's got a koi fish right there. That's very nice. But this is very pretty. I mean, if I got into D and D and I was like going to be about it and it could actually have a schedule that could support it. Whenever we start streaming D and D, I'm going to go back and get one of these books. And it's going to be like my, boo, 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 boo. I'm going to get some led lights in there. So it looks like it glows and stuff. So that's just me. Uh, very cool. Spellbook minis moving on here to Nouvelle France. I'm just curious. Cause it looked like, I don't know. There's a cubies and there's stuff and I don't, I don't know what the heck's going on here, but I want to find out a little bit more. Uh, this one is hoping for about 50 grand. It's got about 20, it's got 24 days ago, but so far it's, it could probably use a bit of a push. Um, uh, so let's see. What's the little tagline? A game of strategy and block placement. Nouveau front. Uh, Nick for the fish. It depends if you're going international. Uh, and if you want distilled water or any old tap, there's different price ranges and stuff, but I'm sure you can talk to them, get them to come on down. Uh, if you get like two books, you get a free fish, stuff like that. It's weird. Uh, since the beginning of the 17th century, hundreds of brave colonists have come to North America to forge new life along St. Lawrence River in Nouveau France. With short summers and limiting the time available for building, the intendant of the colony tries to get as many buildings completed as possible before the onset of winter, asking the overseers to redouble their efforts because before the snow comes, covering the construction sites and stopping their work. The most successful overseer will be awarded the prestigious title of Royal Engineer and become the Victory Point guy. So this is weird. So these things are all like glued together, it looks like, and they're all weird colors. And then there's like this. The, the main reason I clicked on this is like this weird track thing. Like what? What are you doing? So it's got 48 wooden construction blocks. So I guess that means maybe of these things. So it looks like 48, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times 4. Yeah, it's 48 maybe with all of these. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, and then they got foam snow drifts. Okay. Or you can get wooden snow drifts if you spend more money. Or if you get the Kickstarter exclusive. Why? Royal recognition. Give me some. Okay, here we go. Huh. For a chapel, charcoal, faux, nouveau. Okay, so what do you do? You draw a construction block card. Okay. Choose a construction block and add it to one of the three construction sites. Oh, so that's what those three things were. Okay. How do they stand? Oh, it leans on it. Never mind. Okay, we're good. Receive points for each cube of your color that are linked to the newly placed block. Point to cubes with your old timey hand to receive. Okay, so three. One, two, three. Move that point marker of your color. Okay, three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, add snow drifts when the snowflake card is drawn and points are calculated for the level in play. I mean, that's cool, but that. And that's it. Okay, what do you think of this one? Fred Perro says, survey says, le pass. Patrick says, so it's about Quebec. Uh, yeah. Saw a live play of this. Is it good? Is it good? It's very expensive. Uh, very limited dice backs. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, do I get patine? I think I think it comes with patine if you get the, uh, if there's enough stretch goals and stuff. Um, you're really still here. Hi. Hey. Did, were we, did we get worried? Oh, God. Um, and Graham says, have I checked out the Starling games website? Looks like there's a big Kickstarter starting on Tuesday. I have not. I'm sure we'll capture, uh, whatever they have launching on the next Kickstarter led heart. Did you, is it a, like an expansion for one of their games? Are they doing something brand new or what's the heck is going on? Number of fan on Nouvelle France board game geek page. Oh, so they got some sort of like go to BGG and talk it up and get things. That's actually kind of smart. This is interesting. I'm sure other people do this as well, but rather than just financial stretch goals, they have go hit it up on the social goals. That is pretty clever. I actually think that's quite brilliant. Uh, interesting. 
Okay, classic stretch goals. You can do your thing. I'll get on the art and stuff like all oh, that's fun. Aren't we having fun? Uh, tantrum, talking it up. I don't know. I just don't, I, I guess like this just seems kind of like hot glued together vibe, but it, it's probably nice. I mean, this is obviously a prototype that we're looking at here, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It just seems like everything's gonna be kind of leany and creaky and I know it's old timey France, but like Rob's, I don't need it. I don't know. Yeah. I want to check it out. Uh, John says, do you guys know anything about, uh, Tris Uh, I really love his game, but I've only seen one preview on it. I can't even pronounce it. I have no idea. Uh, yeah, Nick's with me, says, hey, Nick, by the way, uh, says, I thought er, some campaigns have social media stretch goals, which I always thought was smart. I think that's brilliant to get uh, eyeballs on your game. I would do that instantly. I think that's very smart, and I imagine we'll see that more and more in the future. Okay, moving on to something I'm very excited about. I don't know about y'all, but Dyson Inc., a Roll and Write anthology. Ooh, what's it going to mean? I don't know. The anthology of 10 roll and writes by 11 different designers, all bound in a book. Nick, are we backing this? Yes. I'm going to write it down now. There's a couple I think we should get. Uh, okay. I'm just, hold on. I'm going to get my paper. I got to get my fresh. I got to get fresh. Okay. Boom. Dice Nick. Here we go. It's looking for 15 grand. It's made about half that. It's got 11 days to go. I've seen ads for this on like Facebook and stuff or just around. Okay. Okay. Dice Nink volume one is an anthology of 10 roll and write games in book form, bringing together the work of 11 designers for a range of player counts and complexity levels, whether introducing new players or playing with enthusiasts, all are re or are playable uh, with just some pens or pencils and dice. William, you do not say black. You haven't even seen this. It's 10 games and 200 pages of roll and write fun. Yes. P and P are included. Pens and pa paper. I don't know. Uh, Dice Unique features 10 different games. 10. I mean, this is blowing the whole two games in one box out of the water. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, that comes down to a buck 50 a game and the print at the print and play tier and 290, the physical copy tier with print and play included. Which in this one, it's like, yeah, might as well just get the print and play because it's the same. What I want to know is like, what are some of these designers? So what's included, folks? You get the PDF. You get that. You get that. All right, to play all the games, you're going to need six-sided dice in one color. Six-sided dice in the second color. One six-sided die in the third color. Okay. for print. Show me the damn games. You sons of bitch. Okay. Scrapyard Robot by Sarah and Will Reed. Very cool. What fun. So Scrapyard Robot is a solitaire game based on searching the scrapyard for parts. There are only so many places to search and your nemesis Rick is searching the same yard. Set collection meets area control in this game of weird science. Looks like you roll stuff and maybe match them and put them up in there. Okay. Little Island gift shops. Two to four players, 15 to 30 minutes. Oh my gosh. Sell ocean treasures to tourists while helping the local community thrive. Ah, okay, okay, little snow, okay, stuff and things. Coral relief. I'll go through these quicker. Icy dice, that's fun. Ooh, not so much color, but Pennsylvania. Ooh, art not final there. Pretty. Kuiper cowboys. Flowers over flowers, or flowers, towers, flowers over, I get it. This one I was like interested in, whatever the heck this one is, because it looks pretty, pretty cute. Islands of Atlantis. Oh man, that's how I always pictured it looking. That's how I pictured Atlantis looking right there, before it fell into the sea. Lost at sea. Interesting. A diverse array of games with dots on both sides. It makes me a little worried. I'm not gonna lie to you. I would never. Um, okay. Variability Towers. Rolling with Benny. Stuff, stuff, stuff. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I'm, like, I'm not blown away by this, but <laughs> Fred Perros, I'm loving this so far. Service has write this one off. <laughs> Shareless 10 games in one book, even. How cool is that? I like it. Uh, yeah, interesting. 
here's the thing. If it's like 30 bucks, you get 10 games in the rolling rights. If, if half of them are good, if a third of them are good, still a good deal. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. Like I'm almost down to do the print play level just to like try them out and see. I don't know. Now, none of those things, granted, they're not final art and all this and this and this, but I was like, okay, like, uh, I want it to look nice, you know what I mean? So, there's there's that. But, uh, Rainer, what it do? We just received low memory from you, sir. Bam, thank you for that. Uh, can't wait to play it. Okay, so that's Di uh, Dice and Ink anyway. Uh, curious about that one. I'm going to mark that, though, because I, I just, I want to know more. I want to know. Dice and ink. Anthology. All right, what's next here? This one, uh, the Isoferian Guard, a one to two player narrative driven board game featuring a fully voice acted storyline and musical score powered by Foreteller. It's done quite well. It's more than doubled its goal there. Off of almost 2,000 backers. So what the hell is this game? It's got cool art. I like the one to two player vibe. Like what? 45 to 90 minutes. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, Martin says, I like rolling right games, but none of them seem interesting. Yeah, I need to know more for sure. I need to, I need, I need to know more for sure. All right, solo and cooperative narrative driven adventure. Oh, cool. Ice Faring Guard, you'll explore the various areas of the uh, the country of Isofar in the land of Telios, and you'll see and hear the journey through the eyes of eight members of the Guard. You and your companions will travel vast distances across the country, and you'll need to work together to overcome a great darkness corrupting the land. There are four unique campaigns that can be played completely solo or with two players. And span over 30 plus hours of game. Dang. I like that. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's nice. So, I mean, th this is dope. Like, these two characters, like, working together type thing. A little some splendor chips. Oh, yeah. Here's, I guess, your eight characters that you're that you're going through the story with. Got some ladies representing throughout. Thank you for that, folks. It matters. Uh, nice. I mean, this is definitely as pretty as I'll get out. Highly immersive narrative-driven campaign powered by Forteller. Guys, it's powered by Forteller. <laughs> Don't you get to thinking it's powered by anything else. This game is going to uh, recreate Things like the video game Skyrim or old video game RPGs in a tabletop fashion, says Man vs. Meatball. Okay. Sorry. Oh, it's got some game trays. Got that unlocked. Rip. Double layered. That's the new That's the new game trays. It's double layered stuff. Oh, yeah. People are into that right now. Oh, yeah. It's real nice. Uh, yeah, people dig those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of unlocked stuff. It's done very well for itself. Nick, get David to buy this. Cool, cool. Uh, aye. Stonebound Edition is 109. Oof. What is that? The 94. Okay, so I guess the plus four teller. 80 bucks is the low end, is it? Yikes. Okay, so it's expensive, but it seems like it's a you know pretty good uh, amount of. Uh, Pretty good amount of entertainment in there. I don't know. 30 hours and stuff. Nick's out. Oh, because the poker chips. Oh, you better get out. Look at that. Here, Nick. I'll bring you back in. Ah. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh, how's your chat? Oh, don't worry about that. Oh, I, oh, right. Yeah. Look at that, man. Look how much fun. Dude, you haven't got a base. I'm already base, huh? I'm going to get Nick back. But these aren't even poker chips. They're just thicker cardboard chits. They're, it's nice. It feels nice in the hand. It's nice in the hand. Lots of talk on Discord on this. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm very intrigued by this. I mean, it's expensive. But, like, I like that it's one or two player co-op. I mean, like that. I mean, you're talking about, like, build something for Nick and me. You know, this big adventure thing that's two players specifically. Eee, I'm interested. 
interested. It's a bag builder for your actions. Okay, Nick. Okay, now you got to drop that whole thing because this goes into a bag. So it's not even poker chips. It's like having the chunky bits for all own. And don't tell me you wouldn't want to play with those chunky chips for the rest of your life. Thank you. <sighs> Pretty damn cool. Uh, Rachel Blask, I'm a parcel of mint cooperation. I'll bet you. And guess what's coming up in a couple? Bam. Ooh, don't spoil it, Michael. Okay. Uh, happy to have you here, by the way, and it's super excited to check out Mint Cooperative. Uh, it's poker chips because putting down any money for this game is a gamble. <laughs> this is Kyle. <laughs> yeah, that's the only tricky part. Is like with these big, with these bigger campaigns that, that promise this great story and all this stuff. I just. I don't, the early days Mike needed it. And now I'm just like, just give me something dry and European and stable. <laughs> That's why something I know is going to work. Uh, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Lots of stuff. This one, I'm, I'm, I'm very intrigued by this one. I'm with you, Nick. I'm, this could be the one that pulls me back in. I'm going to write it down. I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Guard. Them double. Those those like co-op mini things are sweet. It's like two brothers playing together if one was a sister. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's so dope. So awesome. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Aeon Trespass Odyssey. Okay. Aeon Trespass Odyssey is an epic one to four player massive campaign game of adventure. This is already one that I'm just like, yeah, I'll probably out. <laughs> but it seems cool. Uh, game of adventures, base building and tactical battles with giant monsters. This game is Kickstarter as hell. And it's done very well for itself. It's made just well over 10 times its goal. It's cool. Uh, is this in the Aeon's End world and stuff? Is this like tied into the, all, of, all of that business? No, let's find out. So what is Aeon Trespass Odyssey? Three years in development. That's what it is. Duh. Uh, it's our largest project to date. In a nutshell, it's an epic one to four player massive campaign game of adventures, exploration, base building, and fierce tactical battles with giant monsters. It's a fully cooperative choice driven board game played over multiple sessions with over 200 hours worth of unique game content. 150, or excuse me, 1,500 plus cards. Uh, a novel's worth of narrative and a slew of awesome miniatures. Some almost six inches tall. Rip. That's cool. Prelude introductory set, 70 bones. Set you back. Whoa. What in the, it's all hands. Oh, that's creepy. Oh, that's very frightening. Oh, that's very scary. Core game, 130. Jeez. So that's, oh, oh, so this just, the, oh, so just the prelude campaign. Oh, 70 bucks. If you want that and the games, 130. Chase. So this is made 660 grand, but only 35 people have backed it. I get it. I get it. Those are big old miniatures. This guy's like a house with worms. That's very terrifying. I get very scared by these things. Uh, <laughs> What are we thinking, folks? Service says Aeon's Pass, Monkey Sink Pass, or Money Sink Pass. I like Monkey Sink, though. I thought that was kind of fun. Not in the Aeon's End world. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Copy. Oh, Matt Rainer's John trying to. Uh... <laughs> John, are you campaigning for the expansion? <laughs> I don't know. He was, he was upset. He didn't win the Teo T. Wakan expansion, but. Uh... All right, all right. So moving on, moving on. What do we think, folks? What are we thinking? Who's, who's, for whom is this Kickstarter just like, yes, this is my kind of thing. Sliver says, I have no idea why this is doing so well. Now that is a telling comment because Slivers, let's be real. This is more your speed. Yeah. In general, not this game specifically, but this, the style has great miniatures, but the game is like yawn. I hate that. That's what it gets me bummed out. I mean, the art right there is pretty cool. The story cards. It's pretty awesome. Battleboard. 
So you just kind of like, oh, I guess you kind of skirmishing around. Oh, wow. It's almost got the chest, the numbers, the letters and stuff. Knight to E4. Bring my Minotaur. To eight, seven. Companion app. 90 minutes optional app. Okay, okay. Rad. Okay, so it's just big. Uh, Bill Kane says, I back uh, Isafari and an Aeon. Rad. Um, right on. So you're pumped for this. So for you, if you don't mind me asking, Bill, so like the last two games we saw, Isafari uh, seems really cool. And something like this, like, uh, is this more your Kickstarter mode? Is this the type of thing that you are generally uh, attracted to? And if so, is it, I mean, is that your, are you kind of a big want minis dudes on a map, smash them up type games? Is that your, is this your vibe? Uh, no right or wrong answer. I'm just curious. Because, I mean, it does look like it has, like, cool bits. And, I mean, like, the minis and stuff are, like, pretty gnarly, man. Like, they are they are cool. For sure. Uh, oh, so Rainer says, uh, John Wheeler's campaigning to get you interested in uh, the treasure. Of I still can't. Same designer. Thank you, as Teo uh, But we can talk about that off stream instead of someone detracting, detracting from the games on screen. I'm down. I'm sorry, John Wheeler. I haven't been able to follow the, the conversation perfectly. I am always down. Uh, I'm always want to find new awesome games and people. Uh, and uh, I love Teotihuacan, so I imagine I like other things designed by the same person. Uh, moving on. Rachel, I don't know if you're still with us, but here we are. Mint Cooperative. Uh, designed by Jonathan Gilmore, Brian Lewis. Boom. I uh, might have heard of them from doing a small little game called Dinosaur Island. Only 10 bucks. Here's the thing. Obviously, I'm going to get it. No duh. It's going to be amazing. Uh, it's going to be so sweet. Matthew Jude over at uh, This Game is Broken did a preview of this, and I got to watch it. It's cool. Like, it's a, it's a superhero. <laughs> like, your superheroes working together to defeat bad guys and keep everything fresh. Mint Cooperative puts you and your fellow superheroes to work, delivering the citizens of Mintopia from the threat of periodontal peril. Love it. It's done very well for itself. It's made almost 60 grand off a $10,000 goal. Uh, and many, many people, over 4,000 backers. If anyone's played the Mint games before, they are awesome. Great, small, light, uh, quick little packages of fun. We have Mint Works and Mint Delivery and love them both. Uh, they're really cool. Really love Mint Works in particular. So you get all this stuff. You get some Dees. You get the little Minties. And you get all these little actions. And there's uh, like uh, chaos and stuff. Um, and some got some great designers behind it. Why not? How good. Developed by uh, Justin uh, Blask or Blaske or Blaskia. Uh, I never know. Um, yes. So it's compact size. Makes it easy to put in your pocket. Take anywhere. It's very true. I like to take this, these types of games like Denny's and stuff. Because you can bust them out, put them away, and out. Uh, and I like that it's cooperative. So what's in the tin, folks? Get them white mints. Get the cinnamons. Get some hero meeples. Rip. Um, and you get some of these cards and stuff. You got General Gumdrop, Liberty Licorice. Uh, these are your heroes and stuff. You can reduce uh, regional panic. Yeah, you're trying to stop you from getting panicked. Working on a new villain now. Ooh, do tell. I like. You got these villain cards. So I guess there's three now. Maybe a fourth one soon or, or uh, refining these. I love it. Nick O'Teen. <laughs> Ginger of Vitus. <laughs> I love it. So fun. Um, so you got these seven town cards. They each have like panic and stuff. So you're trying to get panic off of these, right? And there's like a little panic uh, uh, thing right here, tracker. And you get these trouble cards, which you here can mess you up. And then stunt cards. You can do like special stuff and things. Uh, Cheryl says, I back that one. I like tiny games. Seriously, like if you can pack a game into a small... I'm, I'm definitely... Not anti big game, obviously. I, I, de I defer to that. But if I'm at a convention, if I'm at a store or something, and I see a game that has a little bit of poppy, interesting art, and it's in a box like yay, I will stop and look at it for sure. Because I'm just like, ooh, that's a small box. I wonder what's in there. Uh, it, it, I just get excited by the potential. I'm like, man, it could be a lot of fun in a very small package. Uh, and see, and is, is that not just describing Cheryl anyway? She's only yay high and she's a ton of fun in a small package. I get it. Cheryl, don't ever get taller. Do not do it. I won't disown you, but I'll be bummed out. Uh, and yeah. So in this, you're like rolling dice and you do, I think, uh, types of actions and stuff based off what you're, uh, rolling. 
add these on, by the way, if you if you haven't played them, uh, you owe it to yourself. They are cool. Uh, I like that you can you can do that. Uh, the only bummer is, <laughs> I think we lost our mint works when we moved because it's small and it's easy to lose. So we got to find that. Uh, but it also could just be buried somewhere and we just haven't seen it. But mint delivery, we still, uh, I know exactly where it is. Sheral is fun size. Exactly. Um, uh, Steve over here, what it do? Watching a Nova on a Jupiter. Rad, uh, did you watch Johnny Cueto pitch another five scoreless innings? He's 10 innings in the season. No runs given. Thank you very much. Uh, pitched through some traffic today, but he did quite well for himself. Good on him. Uh I love this. Okay, so how to play. So let's get into this a little bit. So you got, you got little rulies. Oh, play today at PMP Arcade. Rad. Whoa, gifts. Oh, yeah. So you get your villain. You got to choose your hero. Set up the map. Get some uh, hero meebles. Prepare the stunt and trouble decks. Event deck of playing a villain that requires it. Cool. I love it. Set up the regional panic track. Place the action die. Reference card. Villain dice. Get things going. So you uh, distribute three stunts to the first three heroes in turn order. And then you roll the dice. If you get a four, five, or six, trouble is afoot. And you deal with the trouble effects indicator on your villain card. So bad stuff happens. Panic spreads. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. So you uncover like those, those panic symbols and stuff. And bad stuff happens. Uh, remove mints on locations indicated by the trouble card, then release, uh, increase, excuse me, the regional panic by the number of visible panic icons. I think you can get like 27, you lose and stuff. So you're trying to manage that panic and everything. It seems like it could be quite difficult, uh, which is cool. Interspersed throughout the deck are three mayhem cards. When mayhem is drawn, you immediately count all visible panic on all locations and increase your regional panic accordingly. Ay, yeah, yeah. So you can see here, there's like all these symbols. Yeah, I saw when Matthew did his, did his preview, there was like, it went up by like, 10 or 12 it was steep i was like oh you got into trouble fast <laughs> but then you can mitigate stuff and you can choose dice from the dice pool and you can go do actiony things and stuff when one die is left you discard the round stunts redistribute three new stunts re-roll and begin the next round so okay how do you win so survive three mayhem so you gotta get through so you need to have like stuff in order so that when the panic happens and the mayhem you don't go above 27 uh, and it seems like any moment you do that, bam, you dead, dead in the water. Nice. We got a lot of, a lot of the good folk over here doing previews and reviews and things. I love it. We got members meeple. We got a little dice tower in the street on it. Street on the street. We got, uh, 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 I can't remember his name right now. Unfiltered gamer. I think. Well, handsome Jack here. I don't even know who that is. Hey, look at that guy. Um, Rad. I mean, here's the thing. It's 10 bucks. Yo, like get in my face right now. Write it down. Mint cooperative was always going to happen, but it's super happening now. Mint co-op. I'm spending Nick's money. <laughs> uh, rad. I love it. I love the mint games. Super cool. I want to see many more of them. Okay, so now moving on. We got Yido Deluxe Master Set. Rad. A thematic strategy game returns with a deluxe master set expanded and fully customizable. Come to Yido and make the city yours. Dying, we got some Yido fans in the house over here. It is crushed its goal. Jeez. Got over six times its goal. Very nice for them. Board and dice in the house. A, A, A. That's why Rand is just here. She's like, just wait. Just wait. I've never played Yido. Yeesh. I hate to admit it, but I haven't. It hasn't happened. Love the art. Very cool. Featuring an automa style solo made solo mode by the man, the solo man, David uh Turksy or Turski, uh, who did the solo for Teo Tiva Khan that's great. Uh Sierra West as well. Uh very good solo uh modes from the man. Okay, looking for the best deal. Make the biggest savings on the Shogun Pledge. Okay, so Shogun level pledge, about a hundred bucks. Provides you with a copy of Yido Deluxe Master Set, the Great Wealth Coin Set, and Protector Paladin Premium Sleeves Pack. Nice, as well as all the Mux Stretch Goals. Access to the Pledge Manager after the Kickstarter campaign is over. Nice. Uh, Rainer says, ooh, Yido. I kind of like this one. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're obligated to, but it's also, you know, a good game. Uh, see, things like this are nice because... 
it, it's, well, it's a two-sided thing. One, it's like if you have Yido and stuff, maybe you don't need it, but it's also something you know you like if it's something you owned, you know, in the past or friends own, and now there's this nice new version. It's beautiful and stuff like that. So like, I like when Kickstarters like this happen because there's a little less wondering. You're like, okay, like it's, I know what I'm getting into here. It's, you know, I know, you know, it's deluxified. I know deluxe in general and stuff. There you go. Uh, has anyone uh, played this one considering backing, but I want to make sure this game is legit for a hundred bucks Says Graham. Bill Kennedy says, I I, yeah, I backed Yido to follow, but not sure if I'll keep it. I think it will be good, but I need to go watch a playthrough. Uh, yeah, I uh, I don't know. I mean, I haven't played it. So <laughs> Rainer says, I have, but I'm also biased. Rainer works for uh, Board and Dice. One of the men behind it. One of the peeps. Uh, okay. Cast your gaze upon the magnificence of Yido, a city like no other. Now, once again, yours for the taking. Walk the streets of the City of Wonders again. Witness the beauty of gracious ships entering the harbor. Visit the weapons market to purchase the finest blades the world has seen. Avoid the vigilant gaze of the watch patrol and stop at a tavern to fill your belly with the finest food. Let's get after it. Uh, enter the Shogun's Palace and secure the favor of the mighty ruler. I like it. Welcome home. Ooh, I like it. You know, Deluxe Master says it's a Kickstarter limited project. Okay, so get it, get it or don't, folks. It's not going to be seen many places outside of here unless someone gets it to put in their store and stuff. But uh, imagining that's possible. Man, okay, okay. So this is what we got inside the box. Nice. Oh, it's a cool board. I like how it's all kind of broken up in the circle. Very rad. Uh, okay, Rainer says, uh, let's put it this way. There's a reason why this 2012 game is getting a reprint. Yeah, right? Like, it's it's a solid game, you know? And why, after this time, it's blowing up its goals. So that's one thing that's nice about this is, like, you know it's a solid game. Uh, and Rainer says, also, the designers have reworked it to allow much more flexibility in play style, more or less uh, confrontational, longer or shorter game, new modules, etc. That's awesome. That's cool. So t taking the time to spruce up some of the mechanics and things while keeping, obviously, what made it popular intact. That's very cool. <clears throat> Beautiful board. Very cool. A lot going on. So it's a whole city there. and looks like there's different zones and stuff. Get these super cool player boards. Cool cards. So, Rainer, is there anything in here that is like... So you said new modules and stuff. I mean, like... How much is spruce... To, oh, these are sweet. Those are awesome. Love all the chunky bitties. Very nice. Very deluxified. I was just curious, like, what here, you know, is like, what what's something that's completely new? What's totes new? Them uh, coins. Okay, so it's thematic worker placement games. That's why I need to try this. Uh, where competing clans try to become the most influential in the 16th century capital of Japan. The core of the game are varied missions, which all clans will try to succeed at to earn that money. And influence once a set of number of a set number of rounds is over the game ends. So I guess that's maybe I can determine length there, shorten, lengthen, depending on the rounds. So bid for useful assets, action bonus cards, weapons, annexes, geisha, uh, or for the right to gain new missions. Send your disciples into the city. Use uh, unique district abilities to fulfill missions. Ooh. Those specialists are brand new to the game. Workers with special abilities. Those are cool, man. These things are rad, dude. <laughs> Super cool. I like that. So you get these specialty uh, workers. Uh, very neat. Uh, cool. So there's some tutorials and things. So Heavy Cardboard went into it. Nice, nice, nice. John gets games up into it. Uh, 40 minutes tutorial for Yido Deluxe Master Set. I might have to watch that. I want to see more about the game. You know, that's one, again, it's a game that I've heard about, but hadn't. Uh, haven't come across uh, uh, myself. So the solo mode is new as well. Okay, cool, cool. Again, like, dude, if David's touching the solo style, like in the Automa systems that, you know, he's kind of created, like, it's going to be solid for sure. Yeah, this is one I was like actually looking at yesterday. We were at a game cafe and I've, I've kind of just checked it out, not in depth and like cracked it open really, but looking at the box and it's always been one I've wanted to check out. All new components. This is rad, man. I mean, I love the, the the screen print and stuff. Super cool. Really fun. Very beautiful. The shapes and stuff are cool. 
Love that. Okay, more modern standard. Yeah, brighter, punchier, poppier. Beautiful. Definitely a big upgrade there. I like that it kind of has like the glow of a city kind of seeming uh, with the light. That's very cool. New clan boards. New, 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 new. Chunky chunkies. Lots of chunks up on here. Chunk factor uh, 11 on that. Very nice. Very cool, Rainer. Looks like y'all have another winner on your hands. And congrats on... Uh, to you and Rachel for both of your guys' goals for just uh, just just doing just fine for yourself. Four days to go. So if y'all wanna, if you guys are on the fence, you got a couple days. Uh, in addition to fancy bits, rebalanced and reworked core mechanisms, says Rainer. That's cool. Very very cool. Um, oh, and you can attract special characters to get special abilities for a round. Okay, so that was maybe it was that the kind of the bidding at the beginning. It looks like you can bid for maybe some people like that and stuff. Very rad. Asymmetrical clown powers that are new a lot of new stuff So it seems cool that like you're making this for people that maybe hadn't gotten into Yido in the past because it's an older game now I mean seven years or whatever, but um, And also giving stuff for folks that are fans of like all right now Sink your teeth into this newness right here. That's very cool uh, All right, let's see what else we got on the old list here uh, Oh Nick said I'm looking mighty ghostly. Uh, I will try to fix that in a moment I forgot to, to change that, but it's okay. So let's see. What else we got here on the old list? We got Board Royale Survival Card Game. Let's scroll it on down. Board Royale Survival Card Game. Boop. Let's see. What else we got? Omen Heir to the Dunes. And get a couple of these loaded up so we can kind of go through them like we've been doing. The Wilds of Wintertide. Blam. Hmm. It looks like Squire for Hire. And the District 9 board game. Rad. All right, bam, let's check this out. Very cool. So what is this? It's doing well, it's reached its goal and then plenty. Card game about survival and volatile friendships, unique mechanics, highly strategic and highly socializing is this game. Three to six players, 30 to 60 minutes. Border Royale is a survival card game that combines battle royale me mechanics, excuse me, with the social dynamics of board games. You'll gather resources, craft items, and use them against your friends to eliminate them and be the last survivor. When it comes to your own survival, uh, you need to think out of the box, make deals and collaborations, lobby against each other, betray your friends to survive. The game has many different mechanics that can be combined with each other. It contains resource and risk management. It can be a game that puts friendships to the test. So you get a bunch of card resources. You get some iron gold. I like to look at the cards and stuff. I uh, get some weapons and items and things. Okay, so you gotta gather your friends, get them resources going, craft some stuff, use your weapons, lose your friends. You'll be the last man standing and win that game, folks. Uh, very cool. Let's see, what's this going for here? Let's let's see, let's see. So you get a collection, there's an addition to 200 bucks, retailer pack, okay, five, okay. Sorry. This looks like you can get 32 bucks. Not bad, not bad. Okay, let's see if we got any more stuff. So looks like, you know, like a little card game, fun stuff, kind of silly art, keeping it light. Um, you know, kind of light fun. I mean, it strikes me a little bit of uh, oatmeal -y, you know, exploding kittens. That's pretty awesome. A travel pack. That's pretty dope. Um, I heard crap items. <laughs> yeah, you got to crap some. Well, I mean, you, sometimes you got to store them in places when the the storm comes. You know what I mean? Uh, and the diarrhea dice. Yeah, pretty solid. See, this game just seems like it's, you know, enjoying itself and having a fun vibe, uh, you know, and uh, 
that's cool. Yeah, three, six players and stuff. It's light. Like this is a game I'd get for somebody, you know, that was kind of casual and, uh, you know, kind of into that humor and stuff. Uh, yeah, that's cool. It's a battle royale. All right, let's see. Omen, heir to the dunes. Fast-paced tactical card game set within the shadows of ancient Egypt. Had a ten thousand dollar goal. It's done uh, double plus on that, so good for them. Had a lot of really successful colossal games. Okay, right on. Uh, a lot of successful um, campaigns so far. So real quick before we do this, let me just see what happens there. Da, da, da. Whoops. Just gonna try to get myself set up here. Ta -da. Just gonna configure this video. Folks, I'm trying to read something very far away. Ah, I have returned to color. I forgot that when you have the uh, Logitech, you have to reset it every time. And I looked like a ghost. And I scared Nick away. He said, a g -g 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 ghost. Uh, uh, John says, don't forget you owe me now. Uh, and have a good night, John. Uh, uh, and enjoy the appointment with your pregnant wife. Hopefully everything goes well and we, we owe you forever. Appreciate it. Uh, and somebody says, actually, I think you and Nick would like the two player Omen games. Okay. I'm definitely interested in this. Uh, I dig, I mean like the, it's a cool look for sure. You know, uh, I thumbed, uh, unthumbed and re just so I could say I gave it two thumbs up. Rainer. See, I don't know how the internet works despite making a living off of it, but I feel like, you have the right commitment level. Uh, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, I noticed like when I first went live that I was in a box and I was just like, I wonder what's weird, weird with the green screen. And I forgot that you have to change the white balance. And then I was late because I was dealing with uh, tech and just weird stuff because it wasn't uh, it wasn't trying to let me go live on YouTube. It said, you want Twitch, don't you? You want to go live on Twitch? And I said, well, not, most of the time, yes, but not today. And they're like, yeah, you're going on Twitch. But it wasn't my fault this time. There's something weird. Okay, so Heir to the Omen, uh, Omen, Heir to the Dunes, excuse me, is the latest chapter in the Omen saga. The standalone expansion is the single largest expansion since Omen, A Reign of War. Standalone. Okay, that's cool. So it not only includes all new unit cards and reward tiles compatible with all games in the saga, but also introduces factions and an all new path to victory in the form of structure. Oh, yeah. See, that's very euro -y feeling. Build some structures. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Oh, yeah. The darkness. Oh, heir to the dunes. So, light versus darkness. Face off as rival Egyptian gods Horus and Anubis. Conflict and devotion. Choose your faction and plan your strategy to take advantage of the gods' devotion. Each unit at your command has multiple options and uses, and uses uh, to aid in the conflict. Isn't English fun? Uh, make your mark on the ages, claim powerful bonuses throughout direct combat or by building ancient structures in the name of your God. That's pretty cool. An oasis of content, a fast paced head to head strategy card game complete with a thrilling solo variant. That's nice too. Soloable. Very nice. Very nice. We like that. Pledge your loyalty to Anubis or Horus and command your forces as you choose from multiple paths to victory. Okay. So you get that set up. Oh yeah. Very heads up. -y. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, I get some wealth. Get some coins and cards. Construct those monuments. Oh, flip it. Yeah. Completed. Check them out. Check it out. Complete. Surge step. Play cards from your hand. Change the favor of the gods and activate any abilities. War step. Resolve conflicts in any war-torn cities. The winner will claim the top reward tile that is worth two victory points, but also has a powerful ability that can be used on future turns. Oh, yeah. Offering steps. You may discard... Uh, one card from your hand. Here's the thing I'm interested. What do you need? Well, how much money? Uh, well, what do I gotta give it? I'm not giving that. Barrel pledge. Kickstarter edition of Omen Air to the Dunes and all unlock stretch goals in the Champions of the Nile expansion. Plus a copy of Omen A Reign of War. Oh, so you can get all that for 50 bucks? Interesting. If I just want the air of the dunes, it's 25 bucks and say it's playable on its own standalone. 
I mean, that's a pretty good deal here to get 50 bucks and get all of that. Seems interesting. Slivers, would recommend. Playing cards. Heads up battle. I'm writing it down. Air to the dunes. Very cool. I like it. I like that one. Thank you very much, fam. Well, people are fighting over there. Oh, calm down, dogs. Okay. The Wilds of Wintertide. 3D printable models for tabletop gaming. Yeesh. All right, let's check it out. So these are some STL files for RPG Wargaming support. This is something you see more and more are these files for people to, to continue their 3D printing hobby at home and get some cool stuff for games. I think it's super cool. It's done very well for themselves. Congrats to them. Uh, okay, so it's an expansive frozen tundra full of ancient ruins, icy landscapes, hearty people, and untold danger. So it provides support, free character and monster miniatures. That's pretty cool. Scattered terrain, buildings, and more for you to produce at home on your FDM or resin 3D printer. Rewards are for digital STL files to print the products shown. Here's one of the things that's so smart about this is like, it's got to be one of the most production light campaigns you could do like there's not nothing but it's like you got to get the files out to, to people and things but like man you don't actually have to make this stuff <laughs> you used to be like you make it <laughs> this is super cool painting stuff these are dope uh nick make these get this mammoth dude look at that that's tight that's very cool wow very cool wow very cool. So you get a bunch of like uh, frozen. Uh, oh, wow. That's awesome. Whoa. It's like weather top or something. That's dope. Ruins. Get some pine trees. Christmas came early, son. Rocky Cairn. Ice tribe scenery. I'm into it. How much for them files? Give me them files. So you can get the minis, 18 bucks. Or you can get some stuff. How much? All in for 25. Man, that's a good deal. 25 bucks. And you get all those uh, files. Heather uh, says, I was looking for you guys on Twitch. I'm so sorry. We're here on YouTube. I'm so sorry. I tried to point people in the right direction. Normally we're on Twitch. Tomorrow we'll be on Twitch. Tuesday we'll be on Twitch. Thursday we'll be on Twitch. Today we're here. Trying to get people to go to Twitch. This is all a big just campaign to get people to switch over. Uh, John Merchant's Squire, Squire for hire. Uh, Heather, how are you doing today? 20 minutes, one to two players. A lot of one to two player games going on over here. I like it. Squire for hire. I clicked on this mostly because of the rhyme. It's It was looking for less than a grand. It's made about eight. <laughs> nice. Micro strategy card game for one to two players. Complete quests by adding new tile based loot cards to your bag. Interesting. Your day has finally come. A famous adventurer has hired you to be their squire. When your hero completes quests, defeats baddies, and takes all the credit, they also earn loot, which you get the great honor of carrying. Oh, how sweet. This means you are in charge of choosing items you think will be most useful to your hero, and also which ones to give up to complete a story card. What is going on here? What does that mean? Why does it unfold? <gasps> Do you put all the stuff in it for safekeeping? A squire. Okay. Squire fire is an 18 card. It's the new magic number. 18 cards. <laughs> an 18 card tile laying inventory management game for one or two players. It takes about 15, 20 minutes to play. Each squire takes turns completing quests, dungeons and encounters and adding loot to their bag. Keep vital items in your bag for when you need them. Pack efficiently for extra points and eliminate junk to be the squire with the highest scoring bag. Full copy, 13 bucks. 10 American. Come on. Squire for hire is getting bought. It's just so cheap. It's got to work. A squirrel squire? I mean, why not, you know? Uh, 
Uh, Jonathan over here says, I have backed SSOOO many campaigns. Uh, I have backed so, so many camp. I got it. So many campaigns where they just send you STL files and I don't even have a 3D printer yet. <laughs> I'm hoping to get one at some point. Well, I mean, and that's a cool thing is like, usually they're pretty affordable, reasonably, you know, and A, you can maybe, sometimes like you can get, so you can print stuff at like at libraries and stuff. Like there, there's more and more ability to print them and you might get friends or might get your own and stuff. And then you'll have those files for when you're ready. So it's like, I don't, I don't blame you for doing that. Like, Look at these little people. Look at Tenderfoot. Look at this little frog guy. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't care what this is. It's 10 bucks. I want it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What? Right about what? He goes, the combined number of spaces that, that, huh? Of that type that takes up your bag. For example, the weapon mine. I want it. That's the point. I'm going to. I guess I could have been doing that this whole time instead of writing stuff down. The things you remember when it's way too late. Okay, so District 9. <laughs> new and improved. Okay, by you. Okay, check out the changes. All right, man. Go get some prunes from Wellington, New Zealand. Jonathan, neighbors, buddy. All right. 60,000 bucks. 106 coming in. 107, really. Let's be real. What in the heck do you do in this? Welcome back to the district. Tensions in the district are rising. But where some see problems, others see opportunitas. Inside uh, these barricades, there's a ton of alien tech for the taking. Okay. All right. So you got some little minis and little hexes. You set up the board and stuff. It's kind of ruiny. Any species can play. Two to four players. 90 to 180 minutes. This is not a short one. It's from What a Workshop, uh, who made the movie District 9. The board game's competitive two to four player game based on the classic sci fi film. Return to District 9 and relive the three days of the film from a whole new perspective. Lead your faction through the alien slum in search uh, for the tech that will give you the edge. Salvage the most technology, take control of the district, and claim your victory. So if you like the game and you like dudes on the map games, you'll probably like this. Pretty cool. Right on. How much is it going for? How much? Sweetie Man Pledge, get the pork. Okay. Five to six player expansion. Ugh, it's just so many things I'm not into. Okay. 100 bucks. Get the game. Get the stuff. 100 bucks. Are we in or are we out? Uh, Rainer says, so happy that we get games like Weta and Riot publishing games. Me too, because they got that backing, man. I love Riot. She's like, we're just going to make uh, Mechs vs. Minions and have all the dumb, like, amazing components. Who cares if we make any money off this? This is just, this is just for fun. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's see. What's some other high... Uh, after the Empire. Let's find After the Empire here. Bar party. After the Empire is next. What the heck is this? Gray Fox Games. We know them. They're a company. Okay. Let's see. We've got a couple more up here from a future on the list. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Judge your fringe. I would not. Orchard. Nine card solitaire game. What? Huh? Moon Rakers. I'm done. I'm out. Nice try. <laughs> All right. After the Empire. What in the heck's going on here? Build your castle, prepare your troops, and survive the siege in this competitive worker placement and tower defense game. Mark me interested. It's done very well for itself. It's tripled its goal. It's at 90 grand and counting with 10 days to go. Okay. What's this one about? I'm so curious. Leave your legacy. 
So is this okay? Is this for real? Like we got this big fat like castle and stuff and blocks and dudes and what? Okay. After the Empire is a tower defense and worker placement game for two to four players. And after the Empire, you'll be recruiting refugees, gathering resources, fortifying your defenses in order to prepare for assault after assault of invaders seeking to sack your castle and take its riches. Uh-uh, Jesus. No, sir. Okay. Wow. Okay, so you got your little, you're building a little castle on your little player board? You got the central board and stuff. Little castle bits. What is in the box? So it's 85 bucks. Okay, but it seems like you get like some pretty high production level stuff. It's the wooden castle uh, pieces. That'll make four full castles, 32 pieces, so eight per. Very nice. Oh, I need an adult, Nick, because I want to get this just to have like this cool castles. I don't care what you do in the game. Get 50 soldier minis, mercenary minis, swordsman invaders, lots of stuff. 60 bump. Okay, wait, 160, 185. That's so many minis. If you get cubes in retail, that's so many minis. Like 200 plus minis is ridiculous. So instead of this, it'll be just dudes? Or that's what these dudes, and then you still get a thousand cubes? What? Wow. Okay. Sorry. I'm getting a squirrel over here. There's just so many things. There's food meeples. A lot of gray fox exclusives. Oh, that's very pretty colors. Building cards. The cards are very gorgeous. Looks like the art of like heaven and ale. Uh, Quicksand and Solar Storm. The uh, that one that Antlam Games did a preview of on recently. I'm not sure. I can. Uh, we'll see. Maybe they'll have their video linked. Uh, okay, so you get okay, so you get resource cubes on top of dude cubes or dude meeples. Uh, whoa. What? In but. Okay. How to play, folks. You gotta send your workers to take the actions and collect the resources necessary to build your 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 fiefdom. Fiefdom. FIFA. Fortify your defenses by upgrading your castle and hiring troops. Oh, so maybe there's nothing to make four full castles. You gotta get better and better versions of stuff. Grow your kingdom with new building uh, buildings and refugees that bring much needed skills. Assign your troops to castle positions in preparation for the coming invasion. Defend your kingdom from invaders. People come around and start blasting up. Gain rewards for uh, your kingdom's prosperity. But beware, the more prosperous your kingdom, the more invaders seek to lay claim on your riches. Oh, gosh. Getting sacked will cost you gold, damage your buildings, and wound your refugees. <laughs> At the end of the game, add the value of your buildings, refugees, and secret goals to gold total. That's tight. If you have the most money, you win. What do we think of this, folks? This seems crazy. <laughs> seems like there's a lot going on. Uh, Quicksand says it is the game that Ant Lab Games did. Uh, I looked up uh, after I asked a question. It reminded me a bit of Tiny Epic Games. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to have to watch some some stuff. I'm gonna, maybe we'll have to watch this the two-player playthrough because that'd be where we, what we'd be playing it at. I mean, this is fascinating. There's just so much stuff. Wow. It's done well for itself. See, if it gets to 100 grand, which I imagine it ought to, you get wooden cubes upgraded to textured plastic cubes. Nice. I always feel like wood is fancier than plastic, but plastic, you can do many more things more easily, I think. So I guess it's an upgrade. Uh, Hardboard Games did a live playthrough of this. It looked very cool. Okay, I'll have to watch Hardboard Games play it then for sure because... I'm intrigued. Like, part of it's just the whole building the castle up, and you got all these dudes and stuff, and there's people coming for you. But then, like, the playing the cards out and, and stuff, I'm like, it does seem mechanically pretty interesting. <sighs> Remind me. That is interesting. After the Empire, Great Fox has a pretty good, like, you know, like I'm always interested in their games, generally. Uh, interesting. Okay, Orchard, nine-card solitaire game. It got 2018 Golden Geek 
uh, awards for best print and play game. Okay, so that's something. Best overall game, nine card contest. Okay, tile laying fruit harvesting includes multiplayer rules, but it's a solo game. Each player would have to have their own copy if you're gonna play multiplayer. 10 minutes, small box solo game of harvesting fruit. Yeah, you got that right, it's small. Nine cards. Because there's this whole thing of like the button shy games and stuff, it's 18 card games. 18 seems to be the magic number. And this person said, hold my cards, bro. I only need half of them anyway. Boom. And if you can do stuff with just nine cards, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm super stoked. <laughs> okay, so it looks like you got cards and dice. These cards have different trees and things. Quick solitaire tile lane game. You got me already. That plays in under 10 minutes. The aim of the game is to harvest fruit score points by placing cards so that their fruit trees overlap other trees already in the orchard that bear the same fruit. It's a little bit of a puzzle. The more trees you can overlap, the more fruit you'll pick. In addition to the 15 dice representing your increased harvest, there are two cubes representing rotten fruit. Ew. These allow you to lay a card that you wouldn't otherwise be able to, but come with a points forfeit, so you must decide if and when to play them. Interesting. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay. So to me, Orchard is a perfect little puzzler. It's the epitome of simple but complex design where the game is nothing but interesting decisions. Everything else has been sublimated away. I am intrigued to so get a dice for apples, pears, plums, and you get those two uh, rotten fruit cubes. So the dice, I guess maybe if you haven't stacked up, you have a four, so you know that there's four in the stack maybe or something like that. So you're going to shuffle and divide the 18 cards into two nine card deck. Oh, so it's, it's an 18 card game. You see that? You see that there? 18, magic number. Picking one and setting the other side to play again later. Draw the top card and place it face up to form the start of your orchard. Draw two cards into your hand. I feel better about having 18 cards because there's just more variety. Each turn you'll play a card from your hand, add to the orchard, rotating it 90 or 100 degrees, 180 degrees either way, overlapping one or more cards already in play. You'll then place a die showing one on each tree you planted, uh, tree of your uh, excuse me, played cards that overlaps a matching tree underneath it. If there's already a die underneath, you'll rotate the die to increase the amount harvested. So one to a three, three to a six, etc. That is cool. So like here you go, bam. Then you put this dang boom, boom, bam. Cause you got one there. Boom, 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 boom. Then you can go right to three. Ka, ka, ka. But now this guy's still here, but these ones are now in the mix. Boom, bam. You throw that one there, it goes boom, six, one, 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 bam. That's tight. You're allowed to uh, overlap non-matching trees twice per game by placing those rotten fruit, fruit cubes. I am interested. Very freaking cool. One-stop co-op shop. I like that. That's a good name. So you get 12 bucks. You get the game. I'm... Remind me, these are these. This is the week of cheap, awesome seeming Kickstarters. This is great. Rainer says the 18 card uh, size is a magic number because that's how many you can fit on a small sheet. Yeah, I'm sure. So it means so from the, uh, the other side, like 18's got to be real nice, right? Like for cost and stuff like that. But it's just like I love that there have been so many people who say like, what can, can I create something compelling? Can I create something with depth? with only 18 cards. I love games that are limited because it forces creativity. That's why any game that is a two player game specifically, it's a two player game. This game is a solo game. That is how it's designed. I am intrigued because you have to be more creative. You have to be because you've limited yourself to this certain thing. And I'm like always gonna be, I'm always gonna wanna know more because you know, I feel like well, that someone took on a, they went a harder way and, and that can usually yield some pretty cool stuff. Uh, that's super cool. Oh, that's really cool. Very cool. Uh, Rainer says it's generally 55 or 18 poker size cards and 60 or 21 bridge size cards based on sheet size. That's so fascinating. The peek behind the curtain and just in terms of reduction, they're like make 18 cards and we can just fire off one sheet per game. Boop, 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 boop. That's, Saving so much money. It's crazy. 
that's cool. And it makes it so you can you can make it cheap. It's a twelve dollar game. I just twelve bucks. I'm I'll take a chance off that for sure. Why not? If you play it for an hour, it will have been worth it for the cost. Boom. What else can you do for an hour and not spend more than 12 bucks? Not a lot. That is awesome. So freaking cool. Oh, that's so cool. I love the little apple dice and stuff. And they're going to get them engraved. If it hits 30 grand, I'm helping get there. That's so cool. Man, sorry. Uh, that's rad. So Rainer says, yeah, it definitely makes for an uh, interesting design challenge. Going from 19 would double the cost of the cards. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> if you don't need it, <laughs> just do one sheet and then get some dice in there, which I know are expensive. So, okay. Get some dice instead with the one sheet. As soon as you go to 19, you might as well make it 36. Have at. Who cares? That's so funny. That's really cool. Okay. I'm going to have to look into this more for sure. But let's be real. 12 bucks. Probably just going to get it. That's awesome. Okay, okay. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Moonraker is a deck building game filled with constant player interaction and high replayability. Jeez, it's done very well for itself. Yikes. Nice. Good for them. <laughs> okay, Ivy Studios. Whoa, that's cool looking, man. It's a collective of creative people, passion for beautiful things. I like it. They do animation. See their animations there. Super cool. Okay, it's one to five player, hour or two. Uh, as infighting plagues the Moonrakers, the United Federation of Planets senses weakness with certain destruction on the horizon. The outlaw faction's only chance of maintaining sovereignty in the galaxy, galaxy is to unite under a new leader. Only one question remains. Will it be you? Moonrakers is a deck building game. It mixes temporary alliances, negotiation, shipbuilding with traditional deck management for a unique competitive gameplay experience. New ship every time. So you get crew and ship part cards. Okay, so you're like building out a ship. Is that what you're doing with your deck? Each uh, unique uh, did a, each card is unique art with a special ability. Cool, 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 cool. Create near infinite combinations. Rad. That's a lot of combinations. Right on. What makes Moonraker special? I do want to know. Completing high reward contracts often requires collaboration, especially in the early game. These alliances create constant off turn play and keep even the shortest attention span engaged. Cause you could be talking to a guy like, Hey, you know, like let's, let's work on this over here. We can do that. And it'd be great. Right. You agree. Okay. Let's do that. All right. It's my turn now. Highly replayable. Random marketplace combined with 97 unique ship parts, crew, and contracts means you'll need to find a new path to victory in every game. I do like that, where there's just so many combinations that you will be engaged because you're not just going to default to the same two strategies. Or maybe, you, maybe you'll want to, but won't be presented with the opportunity based on what cards come out and stuff. Uh, that's pretty cool. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. So David Y said, interactive, never the same game twice, different ways to win. Strategy you used in the last game won't always work in the next. Okay, so it looks like the whole different strategy thing might have to, you have to be forced yourself to be a chameleon. So you're trying to compete contracts, maybe get the thresholds of these different little, uh, ooh, trying to be the first to 10 prestige points. Earn credits to hire. I don't know, 10 points, man. Let's see if Nick would be too off put by the low point threshold. I don't know. Risk versus reward. Familiar deck management. Tight. Try to play this game again and again. If you are into deck builders, I highly recommend getting in on this Kickstarter. Start, kick, starter, starter. Uh, that was by Becca Scott. We got Mark Street over here. I think what's interesting overall is just the fact that this is their first something. Uh, so Becca Scott was the one that said the first one. What did the streets say? Come on now, switch back fact that this is their first game and so well done okay that's cool for a first game right on so it looks like they do animation and stuff they're getting in on this so you got you got becca scott and the mark street saying good things and those are pretty uh big sources and and ones you hope to have like in your stuff so you get all these cards lots of uh customization and stuff very cool okay solar Shore. 23 bucks. Nice. Solo mode. 
Cooperative hand management survival game for one of four players. Work together to repair the ship before you burn in the scorching abyss. It's done very well for itself. Excellent. Congrats to them. 30 to 60 minutes, one to four players. Not bad, not bad. A small box with a big cooperative experience. Work together or die alone in this cooperative survival game of one to four players that will make even the most hardened crews and solo players swelter. Hand management, careful use of your actions, and teamwork are the key to weathering the solar storm. Repair different areas of the ship and divert power back to the energy core, all whilst the ship continues to take damage from the solar storm. Succeed and live fail and you'll all perish in the scorching abyss damn that's a bad way to go bad way to go what's in the box folks you get eight unique nine excuse me unique room cards four protection token power tokens extra action tokens protection cards resource cards player aids translucent dice repair cubes small custom meeples whole breach card lots of stuff Okay, we can get large. Deluxe edition, get the biggies. And we get eight card, uh, room card mini expansion. Bless someone out there. They're, they're hacking up along. Okay, what the hell do you do? Do a cooperative game. Variable difficulties. Hand management. Asymmetric powers in every room on board. Each room on board, uh, your ship has a unique power. Any player can use the power in their current location. That's kind of cool. So you have room-dependent powers and things, uh, including so you can uh, send repair mechs to fix another location, bringing shields online to protect the ship. This reminds me, I just played, for the first time, Space Alert. It's like a real-time game, cooperative game um, from CGE, I believe. It's a... Uh yeah, not new and stuff, but this feels very much that way. Uh that being of course kind of chaotic and it's a programming thing that just, it's going to go horribly wrong. And this feels that way where you have to run over here to go to this room and power up the shields and fire off the thing and get the bots. This reminds me of space alert. Uh, modular setup. That's cool. So you can change, uh, the, uh, I like, uh, smart move. It's cool looking. I mean, that's a pretty box. Yeah, so you just want to survive the storm. Keep the ship alive. Move your meeples around. They can move up, down, left, or right between rooms and activate stuff. So you got to coordinate yourself and your actions and things. Repair, divert that power. Share resources. Scavenge. Save an action for later. Get the resources. Cool. So uh, Ant Lab Games did a talk on this. I would love to watch it and learn a little more. Definitely curious. I mean, seems seems kind of cool. I'm like, I'm not. There goes Ant Lab. Uh, I'm definitely intrigued. Yeah, cool. All right, let's see if we got a couple more here to wrap things up. What do we got? What do we got? What what do we got? What do we got? What what what? what, what? Okay, Goo Gong. Oh. Has there been anything for folks that have been like really the bomb? Like they, they just grabbed you. I know people, have, there's a couple things we've covered that people have actually backed already. Um, just scrolling, looking for some things that are on our list of, of, uh, interested, uh, Campaigns, things that people have showed interest in. Uh. So, Windward, looking for Windward. Come here, Windward. Ooh, that's very scary. I get very, I have my list up there as well to click on to the actual just page and I get very, uh, stubborn about it. I'm just like, no, I don't want to. I just want to scroll and get there by that. I might have to break it down and go click on it. Like punk. 
Oh no, we're good. It's coming up. Should be good though. Do do do. Quick senses. Really, I'm just waiting for the Wonderlands War to hit Kickstarter. Yeah, that'd be tight. That'd be tight. That'd be tight. There we go, Windward. Sheesh. That's a cool cover. We're going to pull up a couple more here. We're nearly to the end of the list. Half Truth, though. Definitely want to check that out. That one. Okay. So Gugong Deluxe Expansion and Gugong Big Box. Or, excuse me. Gugong Big Box uh, with the Panjun Deluxe Expansion. Panjun. Game Brewer. Gugong uh, Panjun. Ex uh, four expansion modules in one box of this 2018 hit designed by Andres Steading or Steeding with art from Andres Resch. Or Andreas, I should probably say. Uh, it's done very well for itself. Over $300,000. Very nice. Gugong's one they've been wanting to try. Uh, I think Nick's played it. Um, and I haven't had a chance to yet. So I would love to check it out. Uh, it's a Rado, And I think it's maybe about Gugong. Uh, it gets tougher to find a worker placement games that really bring something new and novel with a core concept. This one really delivers. Feels different, which is good. Whole gift exchange feels like a fresh take on the genre. China 1571, despite initial hopeful beginnings, the long uh, king empire quickly abandoned his duties. Emperor, excuse me, uh, abandoned his duties as a ruler and decided to give more priority to his personal enjoyment. He started to spend more time outside the Forbidden Palace, residing in a summer palace away from the capital where he'd enjoy the company of the court of uh, the court ladies and was known to prefer some of the finer gifts brought to him by his officials at the same time his initially peaceful reign started to show some cracks peasants were regularly asked to come to the aid of certain government projects but as the pressure grew so did the contempt amongst those peasants which led to revolts Tight. so in panjun you are going to face a new set of challenges that will allow you to add all kinds of great content variety to the game the expansion box contains four different modules that you can add to your game of Gugong. Sweet. Two of them even add new locations to the board, while the other two will spice uh, your game in a variety of ways. I really dig. Steve, you have Gugong, right? Um, so Rainer really likes it. Steve says, I thought it was good, but not great. No going. Uh, not going to throw more money as uh, added to see if the expansion makes it better. So I think Steve's the one that played it with Nick. Um I want to try it. I, I just, I really, I do want to try it. Uh, and I do, I think I like about this, and this is something like Teotihuacan did, is the module, the expansion with different modules. So you can add in things at your own leisure, throw it all in at once. When you're continuing to play, you can always just like play with like one element of it or all of it, or, you know, just play the base game. It just, I like things that give more, variety uh it just you could flavor it i like hear what it says like you spice it with different things very cool very cool so steve says i wanted to like it more than i did funny how sierra west uh, card play i find cool but gagong card play felt unexciting to me they just can't all be sierra west i guess I played again last night now i played all the different modules of sierra west they're all really fun we played the banditos last night that was super cool doesn't hurt uh, that i crushed Okay, I should get some cool stuff. There's some stuff there, some things and meeples and things. My guess is if you like Gugong, you'll like this. Very expensive. Very, very expensive. But it is the big box. You get all the all the stuff in it. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay. So the board game book funded in two days. The Essential Guide to the Best New Games, Volume 2. Seal of Excellence. Right on. The second edition of the best-selling tabletop gaming guide. Rad. 
It's done well for itself. Made over 10,000 above its goal. Very well done, Owen Duffy. Good for you. Uh, okay, the essential guide to the year's best tabletop games. Earlier this year, we published the first edition of the board game book, a hardcover series exploring the most exciting new tabletop games that combined expert games uh, criticism, exclusive designer interviews, and gorgeous studio photography. We had a fantastic response from fans, uh, and with your help, we want to do it all over again. So I guess it's updating with new stuff, uh, which is cool. Create a whole encyclopedia of games throughout time. That'd be kind of neat. Uh, rolling with rock. Good evening all. I know they're saying hello or goodbye, but good evening to you. Uh, Steve says we can play some time suddenly to tr uh, try to get my money's worth. Steve, I'll absolutely if you can if you can see it in your heart to do, I would happily play it with you. This is the this is an example of the page for Treasure Island. That's pretty cool. I mean that is beautifully done. Super cool. Uh, I would love to play with you, Steve. Uh, I don't ever want to force you to if you're just not in the mood. But someday if you're just like I could do it, let's do it. I'm down. And I really want to play Coimbra. Uh, so their authors are game journalists with bylines at some of the world's uh, most respected media outlets in the board game book. They explore everything from quick and simple family games to deep, complex strategy releases. That's cool. I like it. Quacks at Quidlinburg. Rad. Stunning studio photography. I mean, it's very pretty. Very cool. Nice. Cool. Board game book. Get after it, folks. How much does it run you? 20 bucks. 26 bucks. Hard copy delivered. 26 bucks. Not bad. Good gift for folks. Get after it. Okay. Flapjack flip out. Someone just said on Twitter, if you have any questions about flapjack flip out, uh, let me know. And I just, I just like the name. So because that was in my head, I'm clicking it. Have a flipping good time with his memory and dexterity family tabletop game. It's done well for itself. Made it its goal. Got 13 days to go. Congrats to y'all. Peter Newland. Um, okay. Welcome to Flappin' Jacks. Have a seat and the server will be right with you. Oh, you're here uh, about the short order cook position. <laughs> right this way. Get in there. Flapjack Flip has a rambunctious dexterity and memory race for two to six players. One player will draw and read out an order like one blueberry, two chocolate, followed by saying, order in. Then you and your opponents need to grab a pancake as quickly as you can and place it on your griddle face down. Flip it over once to cook the other side and to see what kind of flapjack it is, but be careful not to drop it. Then take it off the griddle, store it face down on the table. As soon as you think you can fill the order, ring the bell and flip only those flapjacks over to prove you cooked the right ones. Awesome. Awesome. As soon as you think you can fill the current order, ring the bell. All play stops and the player that rang the bell must complete the order by revealing all only the correct pancakes without first looking at their types. Interesting. You get six griddles. That's tight. You get 50 different flapjacks of the different styles. Kind of look like coasters. You get the bell. <laughs> so you were saying it's a perfect party style games, easy to learn with multiple mechanics that fit together. Great. And an absolute blast. I mean, it's just a fun and chaotic and memory and stuff and dexterity. Like this is one I would totally play. Like th this one immediately screams to me fun uh, stream game because you know, like it's just a ridiculous time. Uh, you can have trying to remember stuff and doing it as quick as you can. Like that would be fun. That would be a fun, fun one to play. Uh, just goofing around and, you know, just really who cares who wins. You just want to have a good time. Uh, and it looks like you can get it for 25 bucks. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. A couple more folks. Windward. Look at that cover folks. That's awesome. Strategic board game become the most notorious sky captain by harnessing the wind, hunting Leviathans uh, and plundering opponents done very well for itself over seven times as a goal. Rad. Uh, rolling with rocks has just finished, uh, filming my updated review of ice cool and as slavers recommendation. There might be something foul afoot with the WL <laughs> birds, penguins. What in the hell is this? Okay. So cool board, the circular 
looking like you're over Mars or something. You got these things on standees and floating up in the sky and the Leviathans and things. All right. It's one to four player, 45 to 75 minutes. And when would your goal is to become the most notorious captain of the gaseous planet of Celis? Become the master of the skies by hunting Leviathans, plundering opponents, and using cunning maneuvers to harness the power of the ever changing wind. I like that. Those are cool, man. Uh, well. So master sky, so you need to harness the power of the ever-changing wind. Get ahead of your opponents by using the wind in creative and clever ways. That's really cool. Build your engine by hiring a crew of specialists to gather supplies. Your ship will evolve throughout the game, optimizing your chosen strategy. Pick up and deliver stuff. You got to maximize your production. Unique and riveting unfiltered game. Uh, okay, cool. Kind of dig the monochromads. Rad, rad, cool. Wind words fantastic, even after the first... Gameplay, I found myself making room for it on my shelf, says Quackalope. The planet of Celus on the gaseous planet. Buoyant gas keeps everything afloat in the skies. Without it, the city would plummet into the scalding core of the planet. Cresters. The only usable sources of this gas is found within Cresters, the monstrous flying leviathans that patrol the skies of Celus. Interesting. Skycraft ships and longboats employ many types of sails to traverse the skyways. You are the captain of a ship, and your job is to fly the skies of Celis to hunt, hunt cresters and bring gas back to the city. The wind. So it's got super dense pockets of gas. Pressure differences between the gas pockets cause vigorous winds that the skymen make good use of. It's kind of cool. It seems like science backed, you know, like, oh, like thinking, you know, like it seems like it'd be scientifically satisfying when you're playing it. You think like this is how it would be on a gaseous planet, right? Very cool. I backed Windward. This looks great. Bill, yeah, it does look pretty cool. Looks pretty dang cool. And uh, Cheryl says, uh, rolling with Grok, for someone that's sick, you're working really hard. Yeah, man, if you're sick, man, you got to get better. I'm feeling not so great myself. But, you know, I understand the the need and desire to keep on trucking. Very cool. Very cool. So you choose what ship you'll be, what color. And you have a unique ability, increased replayability and asymmetry. Harness that wind based on which direction it's going. And yeah. zoom off. There you go. Well, that's fun. Got to build out that crew. Got to go crush those Leviathans. <laughs> got to plunder those Trejars. You got to gather those Suplees. Got to change elevation. Oh, that's cool. You deploy longboats from your ship that fly to lower elevation to hunt smaller cresters, while your ship is a higher elevation hunting larger cresters. Man, I hope a friend of mine gets this so I can play it. I just don't think we'd ever get it, but it does seem very cool. That's awesome. I like it. Windward. There you go. Bam. All right. Epic card game jungle funded day one. Epic jungle with star realms, high alert add ons, new starter deck and packs for epic. The amazing constructed sealed and draft play of a TCG without the high cost of all those random cards. 170 grand over 50. Just proving that people like magic. Slipper says, I can't, I can't get behind Windward. Don't know why, but just not sold yet. I don't know. I mean, it seems pretty cool. I don't know. All right. So this is, you know, trading games, duels, an easy way to learn two player starter. It's a new way to sink too much money into stuff. So you get the Epic duels and base game for 30 bucks. It's pretty affordable. That's cool. Cool art, fighting stuff with your cards, gameplay. Each player starts the game with a score of 30 health. Your goal is to eliminate your opponents by reducing your health to zero. Set up is fast to play a basic game. Just shuffle and deal each card, each player a 30 card deck and you are ready to go. And it's about how you play those cards. Whoa, look at that sand guy. That's, that's, that guy's bad news. All right, very cool. Very cool. Okay, Half Truth. This is that one by Ken Jennings of Jeopardy fame and Richard Garfield of all them nerds fame. And I wonder if they have the picture because I've seen this ad everywhere. It's on my Facebook all day. It's on my Instagram all day because we follow a bunch of board game stuff. It's, it's on Twitter. It's everywhere. This game is everywhere. What is it? It's a party game. 
by Richard Garfield and Ken Jennings. That's what it is. It's got 264 grand off 10,000. Almost 7,500 backers. Nice. Four days to go. Tom, just the best picture y'all chose. I'm a big fan of trivia games. We're almost uh, knowing, almost knowing is good enough, and sometimes guessing is even better. Tons of fun. Very cool. So Forbes is saying, yeah, man, you got Jeopardy's number two. Got the guy who made magic, making magic together. So the thing that's crazy about this, and I like that this happens, like this is getting some uh, big uh, coverage, like the Hollywood Reporter and stuff. And I'm like, cool, man, board games is, is awesome. Uh, Graham, have a great evening. Uh, hey, you're welcome. Thanks for sticking around. Um, this is another one I just don't get. Everyone seems to love it. Half truth. I don't know. All I know is I've I've seen the uh, again. It's been there's been sponsored ads and stuff all over the place, and I have not clicked it because I'm just like, okay, like Ken Jennings is cool. Seems like he does like a lot of cool stuff and trivia and fun things on Twitter and stuff. But I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't, you yeah, know, and I don't play magic. So I don't Half truth is a party game for all ages and people created by the legendary game designer, Richard Garfield. Okay. 74 time jeopardy winner, Ken Jennings with art by well-known artist, Ian O'Toole. I mean, they're putting together all the people, <laughs> the big name folk, you know, it's like, we get it. All right. The game comes with 500 trivia question cards and each card has a category on it. Like animals with blue tongues. There are six possible answers, three right, three wrong, and the players have to place bets on answers they believe are correct. Players are usually surprised by how well they do. We're all smarter than we think. So it's a little bit of Wits and Wager Z. One deck of Half Truth cards comes in the game. I get Half Truth, Half a Right, Half a Wrong. A game board, three round trackers, victory tracker, six cards, six stacks of six colored and uh, stuff. Okay, so you're going to bet like it's A and C and E. Designed by Eno 2. Okay. Tight. Very cool. This is my favorite picture. This this picture is everywhere. And it's Ken doing a thing and then and just Garfield's just not ready at all. And they just been rolling with it. And it is a good picture. It works, but it's just kind of funny, but kind of perfect. Like here, he looks sort of put together and ready to rock. But this is the picture they used. Okay. Seems cool. Like kind of, I mean, it's like, okay. So like uh, what's on route route 66, New York, Texas, Illinois, Oklahoma, Nevada, Michigan. Uh, Illinois is on it. That's where it ends. <clears throat> I think Nevada and I'd say Oklahoma would be my guess. Those three. I don't know. Uh, very cool. Meet any three goals to add free unlocks. Okay, sweet, sweet. So, yeah, it seems kind of wits and wagers -y and stuff. So, I mean, I get it. Like, I like wits and wagers. You know? So, maybe this will be in that same vein. It's got a lot of, uh, you know, uh, star power behind it we'll say so that's cool i don't know point is my phone's algorithms is going nuts with this one and will not not let me see it and i promise you if i were to boot up facebook because i've been saying the name half truth a bunch it will show up uh before long uh i'm just testing the theory now now i'm paranoid man now i'm paranoid man but that's okay. Uh, cool. So anyway, that's going to end the Kickstarter for this go. Uh, what do we think, folks? What do we think? Are we into it? Do we do we like what we got going on here? Blam. Uh, I think it's cool. I think there's some good stuff this week. This might be like the most solid 
Kickstarter roundup we've done in terms of like there's a lot of games that are interesting, a lot of games that are affordable uh, and and intriguing to me. Like I, this this might have been like my for my money, my Kickstarter. I'm like, oh, there's a lot of things. I'm like, hmm, there's some cool stuff going on. I want to know more about that. So, uh, I mean, I think, okay, so there's a few things that Orchard Game, Squire for Hire is another one that's like 18 cards. Uh, Omen seemed cool, Mint Cooperative, and then uh, the Isofarian Guard, which is actually kind of a bigger uh, than we would normally do uh, Kickstarter as well. I mean, that's just a few. I'm like, yo, I am intrigued. Uh, so, yeah, it's interesting. Um yeah, and that picture from the half truth says designed by nerds. Andrew Garfield or not Andrew Garfield, Richard Garfield is a nerd. Uh, and uh, Dean or Dene, I'm sorry, uh, Denny, I'm so sorry, I'm probably messing it off in fifty different ways. I apologize. I like the idea of trivia games, but um, an Aussie, I'm wary of them as they're usually U.S. centric. Yeah, probably. This one seems. I would guess this one would be more worldly. Um, but you're right. Like. It's made by two American dudes. It might be more American, assuming Richard Garfield's American. I don't know. Uh, I'm not likely to know much about the NFL basketball, U.S. politics and stuff. Yeah, that's a tricky thing with that's the tricky thing with trivia games is they can be limited to a certain culture. And then they're also limited by time. They become out of date instantly. That's why you see a billion trivia pursuits at the thrift store because they're from the 70s. And like we weren't there for that. I don't know everything that happened, you know, it's just, uh, it's interesting. Uh, Steve says, uh, get on sale six months after the release. Yeah. If this game was true, uh, uh, cheap, like half truth, I'd pick it up for like doing it on stream purposes for sure. Uh, I only saw a couple, but flapjack looked fun. Flapjack did look fun. That looked cute. Um, that was cool. Uh, Rainer says, I really, I think I really liked your discussion and conversation about each game. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just, it's just me rambling on and taking stuff in real time. So hopefully it's something useful. And I like, I mean, I appreciate the chat for giving me your thoughts on games because then we can bounce those off. But it's, it's fun to discover it all together and just see like first impressions. That's what all this is. It's like, huh, okay, that was kind of cool. Or yeah, no, none of it's necessarily fair or right or whatever. I'm just kind of like, yeah, that's neat. Not I could do without that or this looks cool, you know, but it's just one, one person's opinion. And it was making it very quickly and recklessly. So, hey. Uh, even when it was ghostly. Yeah. Thanks uh, to Nick for letting me know that it's like, Hey, get get a little bit of pigment going, buddy. The square for higher mint games uh, have free print and plays. Okay. I have to check that out. Or PMPs. I imagine that's a print and play player online. doesn't matter. Pronounce Dean. Okay. Dang. Okay. So I think I said it right the first time then immediately lost confidence. Dean, you're right about the trivia games. I definitely back square for higher in district nine during the stream. Nice. Uh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, anyway, folks, so we are out of here. Uh, we meaning me, I don't know if Nick's still in the chat, but we, the Royal, we are out of here. All of us are leaving. Uh, we meaning Nick and I will be live tomorrow on Gen Con's, uh, Twitch channel, uh, playing some board games and stuff. Um, I've got a fun, uh, video coming out tomorrow where I'm doing a compare and contrast with Funkoverse and Unmatched to kind of, uh, show and highlight the differences and similarities between those games and give my thoughts on those. So kind of almost a review coming from Mike Murphy. Whoa. What's he doing? Um, that'll be fun. Um, and yeah, we got a fun week ahead. We're going to be shipping out stuff tomorrow. It's going down. We're going to get a, a, a just going to spend most of the day at the post office or at a shipping place and just <laughs> make people probably hate us uh, for making them ship out 27 different packages. We got to send out. So that'd be good, but we got it finally all organized and ready to go. So that's going out tomorrow. Then anyone who's going to be waiting on stuff, will get information about all of that stuff. So I will see you all tomorrow at 5 PM over at twitch.tv slash Gen Con TV uh, on a real streaming service says slivers. And you are not wrong. Uh, we'll be back on Twitch uh, where the service is good. Uh, and, and you know what, once we got going with this on YouTube, it worked out, but man, it's just always a bit of a, of a, it's a bit of a mystery and Rainer. I have no idea what we're playing tomorrow. Do you have any suggestions, any games that you've been into that you can throw out there? And then if we have, it we will play it. Cause I don't know what to play tomorrow. I can't remember if Nick threw out something, um, specifically he wanted to play. I could go for just about anything personally so i don't know
Got to think on it. Uh, but either way, uh, Rainy or Dotasi here in the chat, or just let us know, you know, wherever you can get a hold of us and say, play this game, punks. And we'll be like, all right, that makes sense. We will. Uh, and uh, yeah, so thank you all for joining me and uh, dealing with my ramblings. I will see you tomorrow. I'm out of here. Have a uh, just a grand old uh, evening. Uh, I appreciate you and good night.